Hey guys, so I am in the process of redoing my home assistant setup. And I realized as I was going through it that when you're a beginner, things can be a little confusing. So in this video, I wanna go through a few tips generally aimed at beginners to help you potentially get a little bit more out of your home assistant setup than you currently are. Now, if you're an advanced user, these are probably gonna be things you already know and it might be a little boring, but for beginners, there's a lot of powerful things that you can do, but you kind of have to do it in specific ways to get the most out of it. So that's what we're gonna take a look at in this video. Now, this is my Home Assistant dashboard and I'm in the very preliminary stages of setting this all up. But the very first thing we're gonna talk through is the Home Assistant Community Store. If you've never heard of the Home Assistant Community Store, I have an article I'll leave in the description that you can follow to just set it up. But the idea behind it is that as soon as you have it set up and configured, you can download a bunch of different things. So this is how I go through and how I connect to my Hubitat Hub. This is how I connect to my security system. This is how the styles that you saw, so basically the way that it looks here, that is stuff I got from the Home Assistant Community Store. So there's a ton of different stuff here. If you have certain devices, certain smart home devices, there's a pretty good chance if it's not officially supported from Home Assistant itself, it will be supported inside of the Home Assistant Community Store. So this is something I think everybody has to download and install and will really give you some of the customization that you're looking for. So now with that out of the way, we're gonna talk about actual Home Assistant functionality. So the first thing we're gonna talk through is helpers. So in settings and then devices and services, you're gonna see a helper section here. And basically helpers allow you to kind of create your own sensors. That's how I try to think of it. Not exactly that, but that's a good way to think of it if you've never heard of these before. So I have a sensor here that is basically designed to be on between the hours of 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. and off all hours outside of that. Now, the way that I did that is I selected Create Helper at the bottom right, and then I went through and found the time of day sensor, and then I had to just select the specific dates and times. Now it's important to note that for this specific setup here, I added the time and date integration that you can go through and add here. But the point of helpers are to really help you use them in other areas of Home Assistant. So you can interact directly with helpers or you can use them like I did to automatically set certain binary sensors so that you can use them in other areas of Home Assistant. But if you go through this list, and Home Assistant is very specific based on your individual needs, if you go through this list, there are things that you can set up that you can use in other areas. So like I said, we're gonna keep this very basic, but I have this sensor here that is on between the hours of 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. So how did I use that in other areas of Home Assistant? So the main area that I'm currently using that in is card visibility. So as you can see right here in this dashboard, you only see what's on the page. But as soon as I edit it, you're gonna see a few more tiles here. So what these tiles are doing is that they're displaying at certain times of the day. So if I come here and I edit this one and I go into the visibility section, what you'll see is that I have a few conditions here that are evaluated to determine if this card should or should not show. So the first one is an or statement. And the way that I did that is I just added a condition and I selected or. So if we expand this, what you'll see is if the first partition for my alarm system, so my alarm system has two partitions, if the first one is equal to disarmed or the second one is equal to disarmed and the entity state for that helper that we created earlier is equal to on, meaning if it's between 8 p.m. and 6 a.m., then we are gonna show this card. So if any of those values is false, we're not gonna show the card. So if I came in here and I changed this from on to off because we're outside of those windows and I save this, what you'll see is that it now displays. So I have basically the exact same setup for this disarm tile here. If I edit that and I go to visibility, so inside of here, I have three end entity states. So an end condition with three entity states. And the entity states are generally what I use, but there's a few other options here. Generally, you'll use entity states. But inside of here, this tile will show if the first partition is not disarmed, the second partition is not disarmed, 
ends, the state is off, meaning that we're outside of the 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. window. So when you think of this in functionality, you are looking at this in terms of the actual setup, but when you think of this in terms of functionality, what we're saying is if it's between the hours of 8 p.m. and 6 a.m., and either one of these alarm partitions is disarmed, then we're gonna show that tile so that we can arm it. So then you go to bed, you wake up in the morning, it's after 6 a.m., and what will happen is that since both partitions are armed, the disarm tile will show up. So I can quickly disarm both partitions rather than having to go in here and disarm them manually. So the visibility of a tile is very, very powerful. But the example that I just provided was arming my security system and disarming my security system. So if we go into the configuration for this tile, what you'll see is that the entity I'm using is Alarm Night. Now, I don't have a specific entity for Alarm Night. I created one. And what I created was a script. So inside of the settings here, if you go to automations and scenes, you will see scripts here. So scripts, I like to think of as things that you will interact with. So I wanna go in and create a tile. And when I click it, I want it to perform some sort of an action, but it's a little more complicated than that because you can use scripts inside of automations as well, which we'll talk through in a second here. But we're gonna focus on the alarm night. So if I click into here, what you'll see is that I have three options here. This first one, Bypass Zone 43, that's because I have a issue with one of my Windows sensors and I have to bypass the zone in order to arm the system. But you can ignore that one, you'll see these two here. So the script is in essence saying, arm the security system, I pass my code for the security system to it, and then I'm arming both partitions so that I don't have to go in and manually arm them. And I also don't have to go in and type in the code. So that's what I'm doing to arm the system at night. The goal behind it is to ensure that this gets done as quickly as it can. I basically do the same thing for this disarm security system, but let's say I wanted to go in and I wanted to change my thermostats every time my security system is armed away, meaning I'm leaving my house. I wanna make sure that my HVAC units, the temperature drops on them. So what you're learning about me here is that I'm big into dropping the temperature of my HVAC units when I leave my house, but this is an automation that I set up. So when looking at automations, the way that I like to think of them is that they're actions that I want to perform without me having to do anything. So inside of this one, what you'll see is that the way that this is set up is that when the first partition goes from disarmed to armed away and the HVAC unit is set to heat because I wanna do this specifically for heat, we're gonna drop the thermostats down to 62 degrees. So the idea behind this is that you have to arm the system it has to be set to heat because I don't want this to apply to cooling. So I don't want the air conditioner to turn down to 62 when I leave the house. So the state for the HVAC unit has to be heating and the temperature will then drop down to 62. So this is something that I went in, I armed my security system and this will automatically be done without me doing anything. So that's kind of how I like to look at automations, but you can also do pretty powerful things. So like I said earlier, I was having a problem with my sensor. Basically my security system would randomly go off. I knew which sensor was the problem, but I wanted to see if I could isolate exactly what was happening. Was it a situation where it was losing connection? Was it a situation where it was opening and closing even though the sensor wasn't opening and closing? So I created another automation, very basic. If this entity changes from closed to anything else, send me a notification. And as soon as I set this up, I saw multiple notifications over the next few hours, which indicated that this sensor is bad. I ordered a new one, I have to replace it. But the point is with automations, you don't have to interact with them. They'll just function in the background without you doing anything. So like I said earlier, if you have an automation and you did want to utilize one of those scripts inside of it, you can. So I just selected a action for the then statement and I just typed in night and what you'll see is my script for alarming night. So if you wanted to, you could set up a script to perform certain actions and then inside of your automation, you can go in and utilize that. This is very powerful because if you have multiple automations 
that should depend on something. So let's say you had five actions that will always be performed and you wanna use them in multiple automations. You should create them as a script and then you should reference that script from this specific automation because then if any of that changes, you're updating the script once rather than going in and updating multiple automations. So with that out of the way, we are going to look at a few UI things you can do. So one of the things I think is very powerful is having the ability to not navigate away from whatever dashboard you're on, but interact with that dashboard as you're using it. So an example of that would be, I'm going through and creating for every room where there are sensors, I wanna create a dedicated button for it that when you select it, will launch with all of the sensors inside of that area. But the power behind this is the functionality that we're showing here. And the way that we get that is by using a hacks add-on called bubble card. So inside of here, I just went through and I installed this. But the way that it works is that if you edit the dashboard, what you'll see is that I have a tile here that is invisible to you, but it has all the information that you just saw. So as soon as you go in, what you have to do is define a hash for it. And then for the actual tile itself, all you're doing is navigating to that hash. So I'm navigating to it and then it will display whatever I configured here. So in order to set this up, you have to actually use a vertical stack. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna set up a vertical stack, but then from there, the first thing you have to add is the bubble card. So it has to be first. So what you can select is the card type. So we are gonna do pop-up. And then basically all these settings can be customized, but when you go in, you can add different cards to it. And then inside of here, the pop-up name that you give becomes very important. So if we save this and we edit this tile here and I just change the navigation from kitchen, which is wrong, to garage and I save this, when we click that, what you'll get to is that vertical stack that we just created. So the point behind it is that you don't have to navigate to and from different pages. You can do it all with pop-ups. Now, the final thing we're gonna talk through is probably gonna be the most advanced section of this, but it's really not that, that bad but it's very, very powerful. So if we edit this, what I'd say is that you have to get comfortable creating template cards. So inside of here, I like to use the mushroom theme. You don't have to, but if you get very comfortable with template cards, you can do a lot of powerful things. So what you'll see is that you have just about everything that you can customize here from the icon and the icon color to the primary and secondary information, badges, pictures, et cetera. There's a lot that you can customize here. So rather than using the lock card, what I did is I created three buttons here for my doors. And what it does is it locks and unlocks the doors and it tells you if the door is open or if it's closed. The way that I did that, we'll look at this living room one first. I used very basic if statements. So this is gonna look a little confusing, but I promise you it's not that bad. So what I'm saying is if the state of this entity, so this is the lock for the living room, is locked, we're gonna show the lock icon. If it's unlocked, we're gonna show the unlocked icon. So if I come in here and I change this, what you'll see is that the icon changes to unlocked. If I change it back, what you'll see is it changes to locked. So that's the icon. I'm doing the exact same thing for the color. If it's locked, we're gonna set it to green, and if it's unlocked, we're gonna set it to red. So if I come in here and change this to orange, you'll see that the if statement is working properly. Moving down, this is going to be for the secondary information here. So what you'll see is it says closed. The reason I'm doing that is because I don't wanna display the information on multiple tiles. So there's one door, it has a lock, and it's either open or closed. I wanna use one template card to display all of that information. So inside of the secondary information here, I'm checking the sensor for that door. Off means closed, on means open. So if it's off, we're gonna set the secondary information as closed. And if it's on, we're gonna set it as open. So this is a very simple if statement. If, else if, end if. You don't have to know it, you just have to know. If it's not this, check the else statement. So that's how I went through. I did the exact same thing for badges. So I'm using the little tiny badge that you see here. 
It will show open if the door is open and it will show closed like it is now if the door is closed. And then the same thing for the colors, it's just green and orange. But let's say you didn't wanna use badges and you wanted to have multiple. So this is a little bit more complicated, but it's still not that complicated. So this is a slightly more complex if statement, but it's really not that bad. So bear with me here. What we're saying is if the front door is locked and the front door is closed, we're gonna display the color as green. If the front door is unlocked, but the door is closed, we're gonna display it as red. If the front door is locked and the door is open, now this would be a problem, we're gonna display it as orange. And if the front door is unlocked, and the door is open, then we're gonna display it as yellow. The key here is this end statement. So you can see, you can check multiple different states of sensors in one statement and then display different information. Now, the reason something like that is powerful is because the idea behind it, at least in my opinion, is that when you get to a dashboard, you should be trying to show different statuses of different things directly on that dashboard. If you have to navigate to multiple places, it's gonna be harder for you to interact with. But if you have one dashboard and you configure it with multiple pop-ups or different status colors, et cetera, you'll see that you'll get a lot of value out of that dashboard. So I'll leave some of those commands in the description just so that you can see how some of them work. But the idea behind it is you're obviously gonna to have to customize this based on your setup. There's a lot that you can do inside of Home Assistant, but it really depends exactly what you do and what you don't have. But like I said, this is just the beginning. I'm going through everything and recreating all of it. I hope to do future Home Assistant videos, so leave a comment if that's something that you wanna see or get subscribed if you wanna see the final result. But if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys next time.